Metzler's Torrance next to tyre. Are these the perfect tyre if you've got an adventure or an adventure touring bike and you spend the vast majority of your time on the roads, but you still want a little bit of off-road capability? Well, that's what I'm trying to find out with this set of tyres. Um, if you've been following the channel and you saw our last episode all about the Michelin tyres, the Anarchy Adventure, the Anarchy Wild and the Road 5 and 6, you would be forgiven for thinking that my next choice would be a set of, they're also very good, the Road 6 from Michelin. But for me, that, that really is a step too far. I'm not ready to make that step yet because I still want to keep some off-road capability. I still want to go down gravel lanes and hard packed dry surfaces. Um, and this is where the Metzler beautifully falls into that gap because with the Anika, you've got this 80% road, 20% off-road. And then the next tire in their range is the Road 6. Now the, the Metzler is classed as a 90% road. 10% off-road. So I think these possibly, quite possibly, are gonna be the perfect tire for me. But the, the key thing, the key thing that I'm looking for is cornering ability, edge grip. When you get the bike leaned over past 40 degrees, how does the bike feel? Can I maintain uh, and change my line mid-corner? And so far, uh, there are a couple of key things I want to share. Now I've only done uh, 670 kilometers. It's been one week with the tires, so I'm not gonna give you a full in-depth review. That will come much later in the series once I've got a couple of thousand miles done. And importantly, rain. <laughs> On tour, it nearly always rains when I, when I go away. So I want to find out what it's like. And so there's no point doing a full review until I've got a couple of thousand miles. So the first couple of things that you're gonna notice is noise. <laughs> there is no noise. They're so quiet. <laughs> if you've been used to either of those uh, original OE tires, the, the Bridgestone or the Michelin's that come fitted as standard on the GS and GSA, they are quite noisy. It's not a fault of the tire. That's because they're designed to cope uh, more capably off-road. And that's just because of the design of the tread pattern. But these are so quiet. I <laughs> I actually took, I stopped after five minutes uh, to check how the tires were doing in, in terms of their warming up, which was fine. You could actually feel a difference, which you, you can't with the Anarchies. Um, but I took my earplugs out because I couldn't believe how quiet it was. So I'd spent half an hour without my earplugs in, which I normally never do, and it was completely fine. It is really a serene, calm place. The next thing is they steer beautifully. They're, they're very neutral in the way that they perform and you've probably heard that term uh, a neutral handling tire. So what, what does it really mean? Well, for example, let's go at the other end of the scale, a sports bike tire. A sports bike tire is designed to handle high acceleration forces, high braking forces and to get you into those curves really quickly. So those tires tend to tip in to a corner very quickly. So that's the opposite to a neutral tire. Whereas what these will do, they, they're obviously gonna corner very well, but that tipping in pro process is much more controlled uh, and it's fairly neutral all the way through from vertical to 45, 50 degrees. Uh, that's exactly what I'm looking for with this tire because the uh, Anarchy Adventure tire, after about 40, 45 degrees at the most, they, they fall into the corner. And when, when you're trying to hustle along your favorite set of bends, it is quite difficult to hold a tight line or to change your line mid corner. So if you've got a, a, a double apex bend, for example, it can be quite tricky with the Anarchy Adventure tires, but that's not a fault of the tire because the tire is more off-road focused. So, so far, so good. Um, so in this first week, I've done 670 kilometers. Um, I spent one afternoon with my wife on the back. I also put a top box on and I put 30 kilos in it, which is prob probably a bit too much for the top box. But I wanted to find out how the bike with these tires performs when there's a good bit of weight on there, trying to try and replicate what it's gonna be like on tour. And I can tell you they're fine. They're completely okay. They're, they, they handle just like they do when you're one up. Um, they turn in, they steer. And importantly, with that front tire, uh, my wife didn't appreciate it, but we want, I wanted to do two higher speed emergency braking tests to see what that front tire's like in terms of stability. And it's completely fine with quite a bit of weight on the bike, even under hard braking. And it's quite important that the tire performs in terms of a stable tire under braking, because sometimes when you're on the motorways or the autobahns, sometimes things catch us out and cars in front brake really hard. And we need to be able to, be, we need to be sure that when we brake hard, we can still steer and control the bike. 
and they're fine. They, they, they pass that test for me very well. But it's really in the corners that this tire is already, only after a week, starting to excel. And that first week I spent most of my time with a smile under my crash on it because it is really nice. They are so precise. You can tip in, tip in, and with just a little bit more pressure on that inside bar, you can take the bike over another couple of degrees, and then you can go along that same section of road again, pick up the pace a bit, and they're lovely. So, so far, I've been very, very pleased with them. Now, it's only been a week. Uh, the temperature was eight degrees when I started. Uh, it has warmed up a bit, and it, obviously as summer comes and the temperatures rise, I'll get to find out what the tires are really like. Um, I'll show you a, a, some, some pictures of the tires in a moment, um, and, but already I've probably on the back tire only got two or maybe three millimeters left of unused tread on either side. Um, the fronts have got about four or five left and right, but that's perfect. What we want with a set of sports touring tires, we want, if we're gonna to go to the edge of the tire on the back, we do not want to be on the edge at the front at the same time. So they're looking like they're very balanced and they're matched perfectly. So I'm gonna to get to the, the sides of the back first, still leaving me with a couple of millimeters on the front, which is the way it should be. So that's a good sign. Um, so I'll, I'll come back and do a full review later in the series, but there are a couple of things I want to share. So I never take my bike to my dealer or a tire shop and get them to change the tires. I always take the wheels off of the bike and then take the wheels to the dealer. So why do I do that? Well, there are a couple of things, uh, there are a couple of benefits for me at least that I find really important. Uh, one of which is not the main one, is it's much cheaper. Uh, you're gonna save anywhere between 40 and 70 pounds, euros or dollars if you take your wheels off of your bike yourself and then take those to the tire shop or to the dealer. And with regards to uh, BMW dealerships, they're normally at least a week or two weeks lead time before you can book your bike in for any kind of work, even if it's just a tire change. But I can tell you, if you take your wheels off of your bike and then go to your dealer shop and speak to your service manager, they'll normally say, that's fine, Carl, just leave the wheels there, come back tomorrow and we'll have fitted new tires or even later that afternoon. And it's the same with tire shops. It's much easier because then the bike doesn't tie up a bay. They don't have to have a technician, a qualified technician that's gonna go around and check all, check all your torque settings because that's gonna be your responsibility and it is easy to do. And taking the tires off of the bike is a fairly simple process. But that's not the key reason or the main reason I, I, I take the wheels off of the bike. There are two things. The first one is brake maintenance. I talk about brakes quite often on the channel, and let me tell you, I honestly believe brakes are the single most important system on our bike, and keeping them in tip-top condition is our responsibility. And it's not just about checking uh, the brake pads. We have to take those, if we take the wheels off of the bike ourselves, we have to take those calipers, those front calipers off to get the wheel out. And this is a perfect time to do some maintenance and some cleaning of our calipers. Uh, it's really easy to do. It's not a very hard process, and I, I'm not gonna cover it today because I've already covered it uh, twice in the GS series, and I did quite an in-depth uh, covering of how to do uh, caliper cleaning and which uh, products to use, and importantly, um, the grease you need to use for those piston seals in the Ducati Multistrada series. Um, so that's the second reason. But the last one, this is interesting, the, on the uh, adventure bikes, especially the, the GS Adventure and the GS in the rally spec, we have spoked wheels. It is our responsibility to check those spokes. Nobody's gonna do that for you. Um, if you go to your dealer and you want them to check it, you need to specifically tell them when you ask for new tires to do a check and adjustment of your spokes. And if you ask them to do that, you're gonna to have to pay for it. But it is our job as owners to check the, the spoke tension. Now, there are a lot of people on the forums that complain about spokes coming loose. And I've actually seen several customer bikes with the, the spokes almost rattling around in the rims. And that is not a fault of the manufacturer. That's not Triumph's fault or BMW or KTM's fault. That's our fault, that's poor maintenance. If you ride your bike regularly off-road once a month, yes, once a month, you should be checking the tension on your spokes. As always, thank you very much for your time. Um, one thing, if you haven't subscribed, please think about subscribing to the channel. 
I don't release videos every single week. Uh, I take quite a long time to put my videos together and I attend with the technical ones to do quite a bit of research. And it takes me a lot of time to put them together. So you're not going to get notifications every week saying there's another video from Carl. I would like to have, for example, the new Triumph Tiger for a couple of weeks to try it and compare it as I've got a GS and see what it's really like. Same with the new uh, Ducati Multistrada. I'd like to spend some time on them. Now that's only gonna happen if there are more subscribers to the channel. So I can go to Ducati and Triumph and KTM and say, hey, look, these are the people that follow. How about giving me a bike for a couple of weeks so that we can do a proper test, not just an afternoon ride, which I'm really not interested in doing. Um, what's coming up next? Visor Technic. Uh, if you've been following the channel, you will already have seen several times, there are several videos about these really quite incredible indicators that I fitted to the GS that have removed and solved the problem with the multifunction on the back and those amber lights on the front, which are now white. Now, uh, I spoke to Mark last week. There is a new product coming out. Uh, I think I'm getting a, a pre-production version next week on Wednesday. I'll fit it to the bike, do a bit of testing, and then tell you all about it. Uh, but in essence, what it is, on the 21, 22, and 23 bikes, BMW decided to remove the side light function from inside that tail light unit. I don't really understand why they did it. I think possibly they're preparing us for a shock when the new GS comes out. I would imagine there's gonna be no tail light on the back just like there is on the XR and that all those rear illumination functions are gonna be in those indicators. I hope that's not the case, but that's possibly what they're preparing us with this current change. Um, but Visor Technica found a way to put that tail light, that side light back into that unit on the rear. And it's very clever. So uh, I'll have that very soon for a test. Thank you for your time. See you soon.